It's to be minus seven tonight. Oh no. Anyway, it'll be what it'll be. I'm just shifting some bales inside because they're a wee bit damp outside and I don't want to be dealing with frozen solid bales over the next few days. The clouds are wild this morning. What is that about? Just a total crease down the sky. Is that to do with pressure? Possibly, probably. It goes all the way from east to west. Clear as day, seem right through the sky. Presumably the low pressure bit is where the clouds are. High pressure is where there's no clouds. Update on wonky calf. Still going strong-ish. I have spoken to our usual vet. I've also spoken to Farm Vet Films. If you don't already, have a check out of his page on YouTube. Him and our usual vet both think it's some sort of deformity. And as long as he's not in pain and he's able to get up and get a drink, then that's a good sign. And the theory is, as he grows, the muscles might square him up a bit and sort him out. We'll give him a chance. Come on, wonky. I would even say today he's better than he was yesterday. It can be through genetics or it can be issues um, in the womb. So Tom from Clyde Vets, our usual vet, he said it can be caused by like not enough space in the womb. And this calf came from that tiny cow. And it's a good sized calf and it's our smallest cow by a country mile. She's a tiny wee cow. I think that could have been the issue. There's not enough space in the womb for this calf to grow. And it's just been kind of squashed and ended up coming out deformed. So that's just one to note. I think I'll probably put that cow to the Angus next year because so far the Angus calves have been a wee bit smaller than the Charlies, which makes sense. Anyway, you know what? He's doing not bad. Okay, he's not much better than yesterday. He's got the strength to get up, go and get himself a drink. He can drink. He's got a chance, he's got a chance, come on. And voila, first ever job with a digger, done. There's a big flat stone that sits under there, so didn't want to pull it out because it would just drop the verge. So that's why it juts out a wee bit there, but I'm never going to be a professional digger man, but a bots job agri digger man, we'll go for that. This is my learning curve. Rough as toast, rough as toast, rough as toast, rough as toast. Toast getting a bit smoother, smooth, mediocre, not bad, could have been better. Oh, you beauty. Good morning, more fertiliser going on today. Give it a thud, break it all up. Borowski spilt another 100 quid. Kev is washing his tractor yesterday, so it's looking absolutely glorious. Kev's going to go head out, spread 110 kilos per hectare of urea onto some winter barley. It's got its first dose and normally it wouldn't be going on just yet for the second dose, but conditions are really good. It's been dry for so long, the weather's starting to look a bit ropey. I feel like it's, once it goes ropey, not gonna be good for a while. Think. Nice. Once it goes ropey, the weather, we've had it so good for quite a while now, we're due a long wet spell, so. If we get it on now, then we'll not be chasing our tails when it's soaking wet, hopefully. Flipping farmers holding up the roads. Getting some barley brews this morning. That's been loading that up. One more bucket and then that's 12 ton bruised. Turns out it was a simple fix. Mike from Rikis in Perth, I phoned him up and going through the simple things that should be set in place if I didn't have the task controller on. But anyway, anyway, it was a quick fix, easy fix. Happy days. Okay, I've just headed off to do that end rig um, and it's actually quite windy, so we're gonna pull the plug after that end rig. There's another field at yard three, which the tram lines go in the same direction as the wind. Um, so it'll be all right. If you're traveling that way and that way, and the wind's blowing that way, you end up with stripes across the field. Whereas if you're traveling the same direction as the wind, it's much less impact it's gonna have on your spread pattern. So there's one field we can go and do with the wind traveling that way. We're back diggering. What's on pure radio today? Let's do some digging. Put the tree in my way. A wee bit 
more progress with this ditch. Abandoned ship with a digger again. Brother needs something done at the farm shop. Something, I don't know what it is. Something fixed or mounted or built. I don't know. We'll go and see what he's needing. Back in the mighty Defender. There's the shed design. Also, the shed design, we got price for a shed, which had that section on there. So that piece is now half the size and we're getting re-quoted. That's not a to scale drawing, basically. Bang, this is a bit more to scale. So that was the shed drawing. And we got a price for that and now we need to make it smaller we've chopped that in half so that, that bit's disappearing so that'll get rid of a bit and we can basically make this hopefully a lean to rather than a full pitch we'll lose a lot of price in there hopefully fingers crossed as well as removing concrete panels around all of that hopefully bring the price down because it was mega right discussion done there's a wee job to do in the kitchen of the farm shop there's an extractor fan to come down because we've built a and added a bit to the kitchen. I'll show you all that later. Just stopped at the digger there and um, jumped in it. Just quickly checked the cows in the calving camera and there's one just calved and I think there's a twin coming, so get along the road sharp. Right, we'll Let's put that one next door and then. There we go, set of twins. Two heifers. Mother's quite keen to get at them, which is good. She's got a decent bit of milk, we'll just see how they go. Navel spread. We're going to get a few gates, let's put That's her in here with her two calves. Lovely wee set of twins. Gorkers. Two Anguses. The mother seems not too bad, not too aggressive, so. We'll leave them to it. Three girls, two heifer calves, and the coo. I've moved the second calf in close to the other one, so the mother's getting a better go at it now. The lick, it's like stimulation. It's like when you see mothers give a baby a rub. It's exactly the same, the lick's doing the same thing. Soothing, it's stimulating, it activates the body, gets them, gets them up and ready to go. First set of twins for the year. Number one is not hanging about straight on the teeth, no messing about. Last few sets of twins we've had, there's been a couple of sets which have been absolutely fine, plenty of milk, no issues. There's one set where there was definitely a small one that got bullied out where we sh probably should have taken it off and given it extra milk on the side. So we're figuring it out as we go, but... Come on, pal. Just want to get this calf sped up a bit. Hey, almost, almost, pal. There you go, that's you. There you go, get your feet. The cow's giving it a hell of a lick. Knocking the damn thing over. There you go, you're up, you're up. Wee, not bad, not bad. That's you on your feet, lose your seat. She's being a stubborn cow, she keeps kicking the calf out the road. We're almost there, we're almost there. Cow's just not used to two at a time. Oh. Right, we've swapped sides. This one's gone for a lie down, fine. Just flip and get on the teat. No, oh, you're not gonna do much out there. Normally, just leave the cow and calf to sort it out. Give them a few hours, if nothing happens, go and help. But right now, what I don't want to happen is this calf drink the cow dry, get all the colostrum, get all the antibodies, and then this cow's a wee runt for the rest of her days. Or worse, she keels over, because she's not healthy. Get it in your go, oh, 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 come on. Oh. I've managed to get close enough to the cow. Just get that in your mouth. Oh, 
Here she goes. I had to give her a wee help. The cow thankfully just stood still, did nothing. No better feeling when you finally get a calf to suck. Right, I'll leave them be. That second calf's now got an absolute belly full. The first one, it got a decent drink, not mega, and it went for a snooze, so I'm not too worried about the first one. It was up and drinking, it's, it knows what it's doing. Happy days. Got an extractor fan to come out. It's going out through that wall and up again. The extractor fan's in there and it's going somewhere in here. Extractor complete. So that extractor fan unit sits above where the guy's in the hatch. So the hatch is where all the orders go out from, sandwiches and souffles and baked potatoes, whatever. And the hatch is getting extended. So that extractor fan needed to come down so that the wall can be taken out, moved into the new bigger hatch area, and it's gonna go back up. That's gonna be the trickier bit, holding it back up again, taking it down is the easy bit. So that'll be in a couple of weeks till that goes up again. The wall needs broken through and then, and then Fergus, my brother, he needs to decide where it's actually gonna go. He does the shop stuff. Him and my mum do all the kind of shop stuff. Me and dad try to mess about in the fields. Just been checking where the guys have been putting in the data cable for the fibre optic. And basically we, we end down there, so we've been running down this track. And they've hit a water line here, which is fine. They'll reinstate it, I just need to let them know. I don't know if they've clocked that, because they've just used the molding machine and fired right the way down and headed up the way. They should have noticed pretty quick. They should know, but I'll just make sure and tell them. Just got to kind of keep on top of it. Just got a bit more to check here. We don't do straight lines anyway. 